How's it going guys, guys, and pals? I'm Alice in Wonderland, your favorite Kiwi trans girl, and a year ago, I got bottom surgery. It was a pretty unbelievable experience, and the last 12 months have given me a lot of life experience. I feel like a more complete person, not just because my body now matches my spirit, but also because it really hasn't been easy at all. It's been hard, and it's taught me a lot about life, and I feel like I'm a much stronger person than ever before. Today, we're just gonna have a small update video. If you wanna hear about the full story in depth, I made a video here at three months, and I also made an update at six months post-op. If you're expecting me to be unhinged, I'm sorry to disappoint. This series of videos is a bit of an outlier of content on my channel. I try to get the facts across because I feel like I can help people. For those of you who have found me through this series of videos, please consider checking out the rest of my channel. I work really hard and try to make funny videos. I'm sure you'll enjoy them if you give them a shot. So, what's it like to get bottom surgery? Well, it's stressful, it's exciting, and it's terrifying. It is a big step to take on your journey through transition, and it's not one to be taken lightly. Now that I'm one year post-op, I feel like I can make a few accurate assessments. First off, it's a long recovery. The surgery itself is really intense, and for the first few weeks afterwards, you're probably just going to be in survival mode. I really recommend having a support person, otherwise you will struggle. After about two months, you start feeling pretty normal again, but I'd say it's not really Really until six to eight months where you can start doing things again. So I guess the main takeaway is just go into it expecting to be f***ed for six months. Actually no, go into it expecting to not be f for six months. I mean sure, your body is probably healed enough at about two to three months to take the strain, but it might be messy or uncomfortable. Just use your best judgement. Anyway, that's what getting bottom surgery is like. Like I said, if you want a more in-depth look, check out this video. Now, on to the update. How are things for me at one year post-operation? Well, let's do a stock take. Please be aware the following section is completely TMI. It's also very personal, so please, your discretion would be appreciated. Because the first thing I want to talk about today is feeling. This is where I've had a lot of progress. In my last update, I was struggling a lot. Sexual sensations were pleasurable, but really quite hard to achieve. I'm glad to say I have now broken that barrier. And this is the part where viewer discretion is advised. Okay, so it took me until about eight or nine months post-op to relearn how to, for lack of a better phrase, please myself. Oh, it's embarrassing talking about this on the internet. Don't make fun of me. This is valuable information and it could help people. That's why I'm talking about it. My main takeaway is that it feels f***ing amazing. It really does. And I enjoy this a lot more than I ever did before surgery. But it is a lot more difficult as well. Still, I am delighted to say I can finally cross this one off the list. And the thing that I mentioned I hadn't been able to do in my last video, but guess what? I can do that as well. <laughs> this is really weird to talk about. It's amazing. F yeah. Getting to climax takes a lot more time than it ever used to. For some people that might be a good thing, for others less so. Just be mindful of it and don't freak out like I did. For a whole period of like three to six months, I was just convinced I had completely lost the ability to climax. I actually went through like the seven stages of grief, ending in acceptance. I was like, yep, okay. So this is what it's like being a cis woman. Hashtag men be like, where's the f***ing clip? I felt like it was right there, so close, but I could never quite crest the hill. Really not pleasant. Then eventually it just happened and it really surprised me. I was like, what? Oh, okay, I can do that now. Just give yourself time. You need to relearn how to please yourself in a completely different and more complicated way. It will take some practice. It took me literally eight and a half months to finally crest that hill. And even when you got it down, it's still likely going to be difficult. But it's possible. I know it's a point of worry for a lot of people going into the surgery, so I'm just gonna go out and say, yes, you can still orgasm. Having said that, of course, your mileage may vary. Everyone's surgery results are different. I'm just speaking from my own experience. But yeah, I am just really happy about that. <laughs> I mean, like, I could live with never climaxing again, but I'm really glad I don't have to. I'm still learning and getting lots of practice. See, I'm a busy gal. Everything is on a time crunch, and that includes pleasuring myself. The quicker the better, so that I can go back to being productive. When I first climaxed after surgery, about eight and a half months post-op, it took literally 45 minutes. It was exhausting. As time went on, I got a bit better and better at it. Got it down to half an hour, and now, at about a year, it's usually about 20 minutes. Honestly, you know, that's, that's a good length of time. A couple of times I knocked it out in like five minutes, which would be great for a time crunch, but I have not been able to reliably replicate that. And I have not yet been intimate with another person, but I know from dilation and 
other things that I'm not gonna have any trouble. I'll be pretty good at receiving. Next up is dilation, which I know is another big concern for a lot of people. What's it like at one year? I will say again, same as I did in all of my earlier videos, dilation is extremely important. Make a plan for it. Do not procrastinate. You need to keep it up. Dilation is really intensive for the first few months following surgery, but as you heal, you can step it down more and more and more. I go a lot more in detail in this video here. What? Just, just watch the playlist, honestly. Just watch it. Give me views, like them all. Please, share them. I need help. I want to be a full-time YouTuber. Now, dilation at one-year post-op, things are pretty easy. I don't think I spend more than 15 minutes a day dilating, and I could step it down more, but honestly, it's kind of comfort time for me. Getting set up, putting something on my laptop, and then just sort of zoning out for 15 minutes in the first thing in the morning. If I really wanted to, I could probably take it down to like 10 minutes, and to be fair, at this stage, I can skip days semi-regularly if I want to. At any rate, it's totally, completely manageable. 10 to 15 minutes a day is easy. You just make it a part of your routine, just like having a shower or brushing your teeth. Why not be really productive and combine the three at the same time? It's simply a part of life now. Also, if I please myself with penetrative, then that counts as a dilation. So I suppose if you were a real nymphomaniac, you could just masturbate a lot and just never dilate. Anyway, that's pretty much dilation. On to the next thing. Smooth body. This has been by far my favorite result. Being able to wear swimsuits, yoga pants, sexy lingerie, and have it all look great, aside from my notable lack of boobage, is just awesome. I don't have much else to say on that. That was really my main source of dysphoria, and the surgeries just killed it. So that's awesome. I do not miss having a bulge at all, plus it made this really funny. And last thing I wanted to mention is that, again, this is not easy and it continues to not be easy. I mentioned this in my last update video, but I'm not entirely happy with the aesthetics as a result of my surgery, and I've decided to get a revision done. It's a simple, easy revision surgery. It's purely external, and it will not be nearly as big a recovery time as the main one, but it's something to keep in mind. The main thing that really irritated me is that you need to wait for all of the swelling to go down and for the surgery to completely heal, which means surgeons won't do your revision surgery until probably 12 months after surgery. Now, there are a few things to say on that, but the main one I'm gonna stick to is that I actually think that's pretty wise. I wanted to get a revision in six months, but having seen now just how much it's healed between the sixth and twelfth month, I think that would have been a bad idea. It's best to just wait and get it done properly, I think. What this means, of course, is that should you not like the way it looks, you might be stuck like that for twelve months. And it might be hard. The revision surgery will also cost more money. So I'll say this again just as I did in my last update video because I think it's just that important. It is extremely common to need a second surgery on this one. My advice to you is that you should actually even go into the surgery expecting to need a second one further down the line. Worst case scenario, you're prepared for it. Best case scenario, things are easier than you expected. Do not expect the surgery to just be a one and done because you might end up in a depressive episode. And I'm woman enough, I'm strong enough to admit that that's what happened to me. As amazing as all of this has been, not being happy with the visual outcome hurts. It's taken me a long time to process my emotions, but after a year, I feel like I've come to a new understanding, and given my platform, I hope I can help you deal with this as well. I don't know if I'll ever be able to explain my emotions fully, but I guess what I've come to accept is that it's possible for there to be largely positive results, but to also have some negative. My surgery was a success but it could have been better. And I'm really excited to get my revision surgery and come out of it finally looking that 100% I was always after. This is an extremely common outcome for the surgery and I want you to be ready in case you're in the same situation as I am. Be prepared for this and to need a revision surgery. Plan for it even, it'll just make it easier for you. And if you're lucky, you can just wipe all of them away and you don't have to worry. This last year has forced me to become a stronger woman. And it's not just my surgery. My YouTube channel has seen a lot of growth, but it's also seen pitfalls. All of these things have knocked me down a peg or two, but I've climbed back up. I am a stronger human being now than I ever was before, and I know I can make it through anything. My struggles have taught me a lot about life. And after all of it, I'm happy. And as of the upload of this video, I'll be in hospital again, getting my revision surgery done, which I intend to keep you updated with in later videos. And that's really all I have to say. If you want to know more, please check out my other videos. Like, subscribe, all of that jazz. Most of my videos are just me fucking around, being unhinged, and it's really fun. Of course, this video and this series of videos is a bit more of an outlier as I try to make my surgery videos serious because I feel like they can help people. If you found my channel through these surgery videos, I really hope you give my other videos a go as I work really hard on them. Anyway, 
share this video with your friends who might be considering going through bottom surgery and if you want to support my channel please consider becoming a member and being a commissioned officer in my queer army. Wish me luck everyone.